Jude Al Marar from the Roof of Abu Dhabi, a UAE citizen born and raised in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, French educated. My family put me in the French school, not sure why, but uh, I thank them now. Uh, I am trilingual and I now work for the Louvre Abu Dhabi in external affairs. Um, first of all, thank you very much uh, for the organizers of your, uh, VR museums, uh, such diversity in the attendance. That uh, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I would like to first ask you, if I may, uh, who has been to Abu Dhabi or to the Louvre Abu Dhabi? Great. More than expected. It's 9,000 kilometers from here, but um, I'll, I'll give you a glimpse uh, or a virtual tour on, on, on this new museum and hope you enjoy it. Um, so first of all, painting the, uh, the big picture, right here is the rendering actually of uh, Sadiat Cultural District, which is part of the, what we call an Abu Dhabi plan. Um, here in the audience, you actually have someone from the Al Ain Museum. Uh, that's something we knew growing up. It inaugurated in 1971. So this is just a continuity of, um, of uh, the cultural ecosystem or development. Um, you know, it, it, it's seven emirates altogether, the United Arab Emirates, uh, which, which forms the, the country. Um, in the 1970s, you had uh, you know, the priorities were, you know, uh, electricity and uh, the running of water, but also um, culture was quite important. So at the same time, you had uh, national museums building up in Al Ain, Umm Al Gawain, and Fujairah. So today, when I say painting the big picture, um, you have a cultural district. So the Louvre Abu Dhabi is an important component. We are the first museum to open on this district. And I actually can take a tunnel and go to, uh, to work uh, on, these, uh, on, on this island. Um, I'm not sure if you can see, I don't have a, a, a pointer, but you have in the Sadiat cultural district, uh, the Louvre Abu Dhabi. Uh, the Zaid National Museum, uh, forthcoming opening of the Zaid National Museum, and then you have the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi, uh, but you also have uh, Manarat Sadiat, which is actually already open since 2010, um, and have a lot of performances and concerts and exhibitions uh, happening at the moment. Um, so if I go through, uh, you know, the context, so it's born out of uh, an uh, intergovernmental agreement. It's a long established uh, friendship uh, between the UAE and France. And this is one of the, the, the pictures taken out of our archives with this signing, uh, really the conception and the inception uh, uh, of, the, of the museum. Um, it is the world's first intergovernmental agreement at this scale in terms of culture, uh, especially in terms of cultural diplomacy. Um, and then you have a beautiful friendship um, from a diplomatic standpoint, but you also have uh, a partnership, uh, accessibility uh, to, uh, to 17 uh, French cultural institutions. Very unprecedented. Uh, we celebrate uh, these partnerships uh, with, our, with our French uh, colleagues. Um, and uh, there are you know, many, many things that are part of the intergovernmental agreement, which include loans, for example. Um, when you see uh, the, the museum collection is composed of uh, loans and, and uh, collection which is part of the Abu Dhabi governmental collection, uh, split out 50% during the opening. So you have 300 loans and 300 which are part of uh, our own collection. Uh, not only do you have loans, uh, you, have, uh, you also have exhibitions which I will um, talk more about later on in the presentation. So 10 years in the making, we are a five month old baby, uh, 10 years in the womb. Uh, it's been such a complex uh, project uh, that, is, that is for sure from uh, concept to uh, the first public visitor. So here you have a, a, a glimpse uh, on, on this timeline. Um, really after 10 years, um, you know, we have some of our colleagues who's been working uh, uh, since, you know, the signing of the governmental agreement, tell us how they used to uh, go to Sadiat uh, Culture District by helicopter. Uh, and now it's a completely different uh, experience. Um, when we go through uh, official openings, so November, uh, 
uh, high level opening actually it was a great celebration not only between uh, France and the UAE but, uh, but with other heads of state such as Afghanistan but also Morocco uh, and Bahrain so it was a very interesting um, uh, celebration um, and then I would like to take you on a virtual tour so we're talking about um, experiences uh, we're talking about narrative scenography um, and and the virtual tour really starts when you when when you know you, you buy your first ticket uh, that's you know that your first steps to the museum uh, is it do you buy your ticket online or do you buy it at the museum um, that really shapes uh, your experience from A to Z uh, you arrive to the museum and then before I start into your virtual uh, tour and I ask you to to work your uh, to wear your virtual uh, goggles, I, I need to speak about the the architecture. Architect uh, Jean Nouvel, Jean Nouvel or architect, uh, a great genius uh, in the field of uh, uh, designing uh, museums. On the right, actually, was his first sketch. So you can imagine him presenting this first uh, sketch. Uh, uh, to the stakeholders back uh, back in the day and uh, really came out to life very beautiful and this is what it looks like right now so really a museum island um, actually a, a very nice story I'd like to share only a few days ago they found dolphins you know swimming next to the museums I'm, I, I can tell you it's quite rare to see dolphins uh, in that area but really it's become uh, such a great experience the landscape is itself is is uh, is, uh, is um, telling or giving us some some quite surprising the dolphins were actually seen um, um, right there in that corner you can see it on our, our Instagram page uh, so really a museum island so uh, as a visitor the first thing you see the first thing you discover is this beautiful um, this beautiful building and then uh, inside uh, the museum is, is a beautiful rain of light. So the rain of light is made of, of this, um, is created by this dome. Uh, Jean Nouvel visited the oasis in, in El Ain. And you have, uh, you know, palm trees and you see a lot of lights. You know, a very nice rain of light coming, coming in from these palm trees and he wanted to recreate. Uh, this kind of effect and what's beautiful about it so we go to work every day and it's com it changes uh, all the time uh, it's as be beautiful at night but it's just this um, landscape that was created by the architecture which is uh, quite incredible um, actually it's quite hot in in the UAE I'm sure you know that and it's five degrees um, less under the dome so it's quite bearable to walk around during the summer it's completely outdoors uh, uh, this area obviously the galleries are completely covered uh, however it's really nice to walk which is quite an innovative um, an innovative uh, thing you know in the UAE everything is quite indoors so it's, it's quite nice to to be walking outside in summer I must say in Abu Dhabi um, so here are some pictures uh, of, of the museum from the inside. You have this great relationship with the water that comes in uh, to, the, to the interior of the, of the museum. And what you see in white are actually uh, the galleries um, or the different spaces that we have inside the museum. Uh, this is also another angle, so each angle is completely different, a different view on the sea. Uh, so, you, you know, it's, it's a very nice uh, promenade to have uh, a quite serene uh, experience uh, to walk around the museum. And then uh, I will take you inside uh, the museum. So I'd like you to see how it's, it's uh, sort of structured inside the museum. You have the permanent galleries, uh, which uh, are the ones in, in red. You have the temporary exhibition space, the orange one. And then you have uh, all the purple are, uh, you know, the cafe and the restaurant. Uh, you also have a children's museum and a uh, auditorium. So this is how uh, the city, so what you see, the dome, the transparent one, that's what it covers and the rest obviously have uh, uh, the, the roof. So it's sort of um, an umbrella. Uh, usually when we have visitors, we ask them, you know, uh, how many, um, can you spot the pillars? Uh, it's really difficult to see them. So um, the dome is, uh, looks like it's actually floating. Uh, at the beginning, they wanted to just put three pillars, but for, you know, uh, 
you know, for safety reasons, we have four, but it's actually really difficult to spot them, believe me. Um, then, uh, again, inside the museum. So you enter, you take, you pick up your, 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 um, your ticket, uh, you, uh, you enter a long um, visitor entrance area, and then you can pick up your mediation tool. And then um, you do have your galleries uh, that start, you know, to the left. And you begin with a room called the Grand Vestibule. The Grand Vestibule is, is uh, the one seen above. Uh, and uh, actually you have um, very interesting showcases. They're not the regular ones, which are the squares ones. They're diamond shaped, very architectural and design innovatively. And then you have objects um, that have thematics like maternity or um, you know, uh, bifaces and uh, that are exhibited along uh, t together with very short labels. Um, and that is where we actually expect the visitor to have a little bit of curiosity and to wonder and to see. You know, there's a lot of room for interpretation in this, in this uh, room here because um, uh, you then enter another room which is uh, wing one. Um, here I want to talk about um, uh, you know the 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 discovery. So you, so the visitor first starts discovering the chronological order, but then um, starts noticing you know similarities. You have objects from different civilizations uh, close to each other or in the in the same showcases. Um, in the first gallery, you actually uh, see uh, one of our masterpieces, which was a loan from the Jordan uh, National Museum, which is Ain Ghazal. Um, the visitor could, could tell or, or uh, could see how uh, the museum is anchored uh, in the region. We did start a lot of collaborations before uh, the opening of the museums uh, with our counterparts from Jordan, Saudi Arabia, uh, but even from museums uh, inside the UAE, so Ras Al Khaimah, Al uh, Ain, uh, uh, and even the Department of Culture and Tourism itself. Um, we start from the Neolithic era, uh, so that's where the chronology comes. We start with the Neolithic era and end with the contemporary. Um, and then if we walk around more inside the galleries, uh, you actually have an encounter with, with some of the masterpieces. Uh, this masterpiece is actually part of the collection of the uh, Louvre Abu Dhabi, the, the, Marisha, the Marisha Lion. But you also uh, see some interesting cultural dialogue. So one of these objects is a loan from the Louvre, and another is actually an acquired piece uh, for the Louvre Abu Dhabi. So here is, you really see a confrontation between the two objects. So you, you really have the time to see the similar similarities or not. It really depends on the interpretation that you have as a visitor. Uh, but the way the scenography or the narrative is put is for you to, to be able to be a narrator to a certain story. Um, we then, this is again another encounter of, of masterpieces, uh, objects or paintings or artifacts that did not live for a long time uh, are now exhibited in the Louvre Abu Dhabi and it's really uh, great to have this encounter with some of these masterpieces. So here you have an idea uh, of the space and of how the um, objects are, are showcased inside the museum. Uh, I really like this, this one. Um, uh, so that's the experience you usually have inside the museum. You know, you get to know the objects, you decide to wear your mediation tools or read the, or just read the labels or ask for a mediator to give you a tour. But then you also have this uh, great uh, outdoor area uh, where you have, you know, uh, contemporary commissions, uh, uh, one of them being uh, Giuseppe Pinones and the other Jenny Holzer. Um, they're beautifully integrated inside the building, so there was a great work between the sonographers, the ar architect, but also the curatorial team uh, to actually have a full um, experience, whether it's uh, the universal narrative or the outdoor area of the museum. Uh, we also have colleagues here, uh, I think, from the attendance uh, from uh, the Louvre in Paris or the Bibliothèque Nationale. 
Uh, so part of the intergovernmental agreements are also uh, these exhibitions. So we'd like our visitors to have different experiences when they come, and part of it are these rotations of uh, different, uh, different exhibitions. The first one was from one Louvre to another, which closed, and now we have Globe's uh, vision of the world all in one area of the, of the which is called the temporary um, exhibition area. We also were part of the Colab. Colab was a program um, uh, by the uh, uh, Alliance Francaise uh, or the French Institute and, uh, and the UAE. And basically, uh, it was a beautiful program of collaboration for emerging UAE artists with uh, French savoir faire manufacturers. Uh, collaborated together to, to, to uh, create this beautiful exhibition with, which is uh, actually until the 26th of August. Uh, so this is, uh, this is also part of our programs, you know, the transfer of, of, um, of expertise, but also, you know, working with emerging artists. I think, I, so um, then we go back to our audience. You know, during the opening, we had um, a culture, uh, quite a diverse culture program. Uh, we do have them. We just finished our season before, the, before uh, Ramadan, quite recently. Uh, and we have different performances inside. So this is also the way we keep the museum uh, alive. In terms of uh, mediation tools and, and interactive walls, um, you do have the option as a visitor to uh, pick up a mediation tool, but also inside the museum you do have some interactive walls uh, where you can zoom in to see uh, more of the content or if the, uh, an object is of interest and you want to learn more about it, uh, you can definitely do so. Again, this is because the labels are quite short and, and uh, and the purpose was to uh, really not to be so encyclopedic uh, in terms of the labels. The labels are actually in, three, in the three languages, so Arabic, French, and English. In terms of audience engagement, um, we, do have, uh, we do also have you know, the, the braille or the mediation tools that are closer to the object, so other than the actual uh, mediation tools you can pick up. You also have, you know, the, the interactive ones closer to the objects. Um, you also have a children museum, which is quite interactive. Uh, the children museum is real, uh, real objects, but you do have mediation uh, tools right next to it that uh, uh, where you can actually interact with. Uh, the cultural season, um, so during the opening, we, uh, we, welcome, we welcomed more than 200 artists, uh, but we are also celebrating the Year of Zayed. Uh, the Year of Zayed is being celebrated in the United Arab Emirates, and so we started our talks about, it was about poetry, uh, but you have, you know, uh, performances from Mali to Colombia, um, uh, to, to, to India, and really we, we try to cater to all the cultures. We also try to reach out. We've spoken a lot about our outreach. Um, we've reached out to the highway. So a lot of people commute between Dubai and Abu Dhabi, or even, you know, many of our visitors actually stop by Dubai and drive to Abu Dhabi. Uh, just to let you know, it's a 45 minutes to an hour drive. So we actually took uh, uh, the, the artworks out to this highway. We put, in, uh, put them on, on billboards, and the campaign was, you can actually plug into your radio station. There were a couple of radio stations that collaborated with us. And basically, every time throughout the highway you get to a certain billboard with uh, an artwork from the Louvre Abu Dhabi, it switches your music to actual uh, explanation of the object. This is from Dubai going to Abu Dhabi. And it was quite successful, uh, an innovative way of, of outreach. Um, and um, I really want to talk to you about the team also um, behind the scenes. Uh, so really the museum, you know, um, the team has been building up since before uh, the opening. So for instance, I've been working for the Louvre Abu Dhabi 
for four years. So part of the project team and really the building of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, capacities and uh, has, been, has started with the transfer of knowledge. Uh, the team has been growing and it's really becoming a magnet for, for museum professionals. Uh, universities are also opening, uh, you know, uh, departments uh, for uh, archaeology, uh, museum studies, and uh, and um, and yeah. So we've we've been working uh, on this team building as well, especially that you know the museum world has very specialized uh, departments or disciplines. Uh, so this has been a work in progress in parallel with the opening of the Louvre of Dhabi. Um, a program um, th that I would like to talk to you about, this is actually the student ambassador program, which started before the opening. So that was our way uh, of outreach. Uh, uh, we thought of the, um, the youth, and uh, in the middle you see Minister of Culture, uh, Her Excellency Noor al kabi our director, Manuel Rabate, but also Undersecretary for Department of Culture and Tourism, uh, His Excellency Saeed Akhbash, and really there was different batches of students uh, that uh, volunteered uh, for the museum even before uh, the opening, really to raise awareness and to, and to promote uh, the project. Uh, this program is ongoing and, uh, and uh, uh, they've helped us a lot during the opening for instance, but the, this type of volunteer program is, uh, is quite successful. Uh, they do the outreach um, much better than us who, who are in the office. They come back with us for great um, uh, tips and, and telling us what uh, you know, people in the universities are interested in and what programs and uh, what are their take on a certain program or exhibition. So uh, I, I think I've taken you into a virtual tour and then a little bit of behind the scenes the scenes. I do hope you have the chance to come and visit us. And yeah, that's it for me. Thank you very much.